Hello everyone, it's uh, Digitrax Dad back and today we're looking at our old friend the Tortoise Turnout Motor. Now we're talking about the Tortoise Turnout Motor today because I've got to put a couple of turnout motors in to the layout and I uh, thought that it's a good opportunity but also to start looking at how we're going to use them to actuate semaphore signals. So let's get on with it. Okay, so here's our Tortoise Motor, uh, made in America by Circuitron. Nothing changed for many, many years, decades these have been around, very reliable uh, and uh, there must be millions of them, I guess, around. And uh, these motors come out of the box like so, you've got your tabs here to solder to, uh, the motor, you've got your uh, gear here where the, uh, the changing wire will go and we'll show you how to do that, you've got your mounting holes here and here and uh, yeah, let's, let's see what else you get. So, instructions of course, comprehensive set of instructions, we'll use those. And, look, I buy them in a pack of 12, but we get our wires here that um, will bend to shape. And, uh, what else have we got? We've got our uh, fulcrum, which will slide into the mechanism like so wire will come up through there and uh, move to change the turnouts on the layout and a mounting screw for for mounting the wire onto onto the tortoise motor there what you'd need to supply yourself is the screws for mounting on the side here as well and uh, I'll, uh, I'll use some dome headed screws to do that and the other reason, let's let's look at uh, what else we can use the tortoise motor for. Of course, we can use it to change turnouts, but also if you've gone to the bother of perhaps building yourself one of these, a uh, operating semaphore signal, like so, then the tortoise motor actually offers a, a range of, of ideas that you can use to actually make make your make your signals operate too. So we'll be looking at how we actuate this signal uh, in a coming video. Utilising the uh, remote signal, signal activator from Circuitron and the cable and actuator as well where you can drive up to two signals off of uh, one remote signal activator. So stay tuned on that one. I'll, I'll put together a video on how we do, do that to activate uh, semaphore signals. The other useful piece of kit if you're going to install many of these tortoise motors, I mean I buy them 12 at a time because I use them a lot, but the other thing is a drilling template. This is a few dollars. People fashion their own and you can do that as well, but uh, for a few dollars um, I find it useful to m show where to mark out your holes on your layout. Um, what else do we need? So we'll need a screwdriver to do the, uh, the screw in, in here. We'll need a couple of drill bits to drill out the holes that we mount. I'm using a six and a half mil uh, drill uh, using metric. I think it's a quarter inch. And uh, I'm also using a three a three mil drill for the for the mounting screws for for the actual motor. So you need those, and a pair of uh, pair of pliers is good too for bending the wire. So we'll crack on into bending the wire shortly. Okay, so the first step is that we need to uh, bend our uh, actuating wire. The instructions show a diagram of what to bend it to. That's to scale, one to one to scale. So what we need is our pair of pliers and uh, simply shape that wire. Just a bit of thumb pressure is usually all that we need. And then just lay it onto the drawing to check that we're on track with the same shape. Doesn't have to be 100% the same. Um, I found that they're very... Uh, accommodating so as long as you're approximately right there we go that's been bent to shape what that took all of a couple of seconds there didn't it so what we'll do is we get our um, a fulcrum which is basically the pivot point we get our tortoise motor we slow our fulcrum I just leave it sort of about that sort of position we'll adjust it fine adjustment once it's installed on the layout if we need to then I thread if you can see the hole in the middle, I thread the uh, wire up the hole in the middle and then I get our little bent elbow end and I put it into the hole on the tortoise motor, push that down, get ourselves a retaining screw 
don't use a uh, cordless drill or anything like that here because you'll end up over over tightening it and damaging the uh, mechanism so just a bit of hand pressure here just to get this nice and secure not too tight don't overdo it you'll damage the motor there we go got that moving nice and freely side to side and that will go up onto the layout and that's what will go through the little hole in your turnout to make the turnout move backwards and forwards simple took 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 a couple of minutes now people ask me why are you using tortoise and and not a cobalt look no particular reason um i've got here this is a cobalt one of the the, the first generation cobalts from dcc concepts and uh they've changed since then they've got their intelligent uh power models they've got the Amiga they've got the uh, IP digital and so on but um, when I was playing along with the uh, the first generation just to see how they go the, the issue I found with them if I demonstrate it with this 9 volt battery here is um, basically the noise that it made you hear that crack at the end of its travel which sounds like an electrical snap doesn't do it going that way going the other way that crack like that now I'm not sure what that's about I've tried different uh, currents different voltages um, and uh, I believe that's part of the reason why they were then uh, changed in, in, in um, further further models so I don't use the cobalt I like the old tortoise they take up a lot more space as you can see side by side um, you've got your tortoise motor which is a lot larger package compared to the uh, so if space is, is that much of an issue then of course you, 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 you gain an inch or so all around um, in, in a couple of the dimensions but apart from that like they do the same job all right let's assume that this is our uh, mounting spot for it that we've decided that uh, we need to drill our hole so first thing we do mark out our holes I'm going to use a center mount and then I'm going to use the four four holes here to uh, secure it to the baseboard move our template away let's grab the drill okay so I've got the six and a half mil uh, drill bit here let's drill this hole There we go. It's the hole drilled. Just clean that up. And next, we'll drill out the screw mounting holes. Okay, so we've got our uh, holes drilled. I just like double check. Yeah, no, no grave errors there. Dry fit. So what I do is I I mount mine directly onto the onto the layout now by threading the wire up through the hole in the turnout motor that's mounted on the top of the layout, like so. Once I've got that in place, I can now go ahead and and screw that into into position. So just using some self-tapping screws, basically get the first one aligned, like so. Get that into position. Get the next one, and then we'll slide the motor in, like so. Tighten those two up, like that. Next one on the other side. Okay. Just 
just move this over so we can see what we're doing. There we are. And the last screw. Nothing to it. Don't over tighten it, otherwise we'll damage the case. So that's now in position. All right. So now we can see the uh, we've got our um, fulcrum here and our uh, motor pivot here. And now let's test it with a battery. So when I wire these up, I use brown and blue as my uh, my tortoise feeds. So if we put these on the battery, there we go. Let's just stand that up. It's a bit easier. So we see that move all the way over to the right and all the way over to the left. Done. That's the tortoise motor installed. Yep, hope you enjoyed that. Um, as I said, we're going to have a look at how we get the uh, actuation going to get these uh, semaphores working and we're going to use our uh, SIGM 20 board that uh, I showed you in a previous video on how we wired that up. and. That will drive these tortoise motors that will drive the actuators to make these signals work so i'll put that up on another video any questions leave them down below and uh i hope you enjoyed the video Cheers.